Hello everyone, uh, my name is Augustin and my name is Melissa and welcome to the talk um, about a day in the life of a medical student. Um, we're both current medical students at the University of Southampton and trying to give you a glimpse of how our day-to-day -day life is like. So we're going to begin with what types of courses there are. So there's in medical schools there are different types of courses available and different universities um, actually adopt these um, processes um, for for example some universities approach it by doing a problem-based learning so this is essentially whereby instead of a normal um, lecture day-to-day -day base where most university students go through they approach teaching medical students in a small group environment so they'll be working on a clinical case so for example they might follow a patient's journey from when a patient might get their symptoms of a certain disease um, to their diagnosis to their treatment and management um, and some universities believe that by approaching it this way you actually learn to learn a, a disease in the entirety so you learn about what triggers um, certain symptoms, how it comes about, the physiology, anatomy behind it, what medications there are, what investigations you use to try and diagnose it, and then what treatments there are to actually manage it. So this is an example of how problem-based learning is like, and is carried out through the older years at university, and um, different universities approach this as well. For Southampton, we do not use the approach unless you are on their BM4 programme, which is the graduate entry programme. Um, but for the majority of our programmes, we do not use the approach. Other um, approaches are system-based learning, um, whereby essentially you just learn by, by the systems. So I think it's quite similar as, as well, like in school, in biology, for example, you might be doing, you might learn about cardiovascular system, about the heart and stuff like that. You might learn about the respiratory system. That's exactly the same way in whereby you learn in some medical schools where you learn system by system, and you have a set amount of weeks or months to learn that system in entirety, and then you move on to the next. Of course, there are assessments through that and to make sure you top up your knowledge throughout. Um, but different universities have different approach in terms of how much um, you cover in each system and how much time you have per system as well. And then you have more traditional style of teaching, um, which is the preclinical slash preclinical years. So essentially, medical school is about five to six years, depending on exact medical school you go to. And some medical schools adopt this traditional entry, whereby you have preclinical, which is your first two to three years, whereby that one is purely mainly theory. So therefore, you do not have patient contact at all normally, uh, you, or you might have very little. The idea is that you're trying to build up your knowledge of medicals. Um, medical conditions and medicine in general in order so that when you move on to your clinical years whereby you go on placement, you go on the wards, the hospital, the GPs, um, you actually have a lot of knowledge that you've got in your mind, you can actually apply it. So therefore it's quite it's quite strictly split into your first two to three years being preclinical and your second half being placement. Um, whereas at Southampton we take an integrated approach so what that means is we kind of combine all three different ideas and they will be um, applicable throughout um, the program. Um, hopefully this makes a bit more sense once you hear us talk through the core structure at Southampton a little bit more and we'll be adding in our own personal experiences um, of the different teaching styles um, during our studies as well. So um, we'll make a start from the preclinical years then. Yeah. So for Southampton, um, we have different programs. As I mentioned, one of our, the main programs, the BM5 program, which is traditional entry. However, we've got another program called the BM6 program, which is wider participation program. This program does have the year zero um, year added onto it. So therefore, that's the year you do, you do your foundation year essentially before you step into the BM5 program from year one onwards. In year zero, um, you have two main modules. Uh, one is human structure and function, and the other one is professional practice modules. Human structure and function is basically your, I guess, your normal medicine type of modules. Therefore, you do your anatomy, you do your physiology, you do your pharmacology, and trying to get the foundations around what medicine actually is and to build up your knowledge from there. They do start and try and merge from the A level to the degree knowledge. So therefore, it's not a big jump as such, which is quite nice, actually, because it does allow an easier transition compared to doing it straight from year one. The professional practice module is essentially what, what you do when you go on placement. So in year zero, you do have early patient contact um, from your second week or so, and you do it bi-weekly as well. 
uh, once a week and then thereby you therefore you go on placement normally it's a shadowing placement so therefore you're not partaking in the placement as such but it's still a valuable experience you actually be able to shadow the doctors see what the working life is like through your different specialities as well and then in year one um, you come into the bm5 program whereby we start with more um, systems as well, system based teaching but it is integrated in terms of what you actually do on placement as well so our system based one we start with foundational medicine which covers essentially all the building blocks that you need to know before you step up into the systems so all your microbiology your cell biology your um, pathology or your investigation that kind of stuff you learn in your foundation of medicine as well as your as well as your basic anatomy and then you step into your uh, more system-based one so respiratory uh, respiratory cardiovascular and locomotor we do in year one um whereby you actually learn the, the main conditions a lot of conditions actually in these three um these three um modules and then also learn about how you manage them to so the drugs behind it the physiology behind it how they actually happen and also more about the psycho um, psychosocial aspect of each condition as well so how did you find that? um i actually really enjoyed it I, I enjoyed it because it wasn't it wasn't just learning stuff for the sake of it they actually trying to link it with clinical cases so like at the end of the lecture they normally bring a case so if for example we learned about a patient with um, heart failure, they might bring a case about a patient with heart failure, actually how it presented in that patient and how they manage that patient going forward. And actually, it kind of puts things into perspective for me as well. So I really enjoyed that myself. How did you find it? Yeah, no, um, I found that the knowledge that you learn in your preclinical years definitely applies to your um, clinical years, so they're incredibly helpful. Um, I'm going to quickly touch on year two. So, um, year two you have three modules um sorry, and four modules sorry so you've got renal nervous and locomotor um, and renal is a continuation of the respiratory cardiovascular module that you take in year one um and then nervous and locomotor is all your neurology stuff um and then in semester two you do um gi or gastrointestinal and endocrine and the life cycle so that covers things like pregnancy um older age and also um, gives you the background for some child health as well um, and throughout your um, <clears throat> preclinical years you do have that early patient contact so in year one and year two of the bm5 slash bm6 program that's part of the medicine and practice module so you'll go to a gp and work in a small group and see patients and kind of learn the skills in terms of taking a history and examining patients before you go on placement full time you also have a birth experience which is um, an amazing experience you um, go to a local hospital so princess anne in southampton and you get to see um, whether it's a c-section or um, a vaginal birth and um, i really enjoyed mine um, my i still fondly remember the experience my first parents um my first um case i saw were two parents who um, it was their first child and um, it was just a real honor to be able to like talk to them see the experience of that like, labor um, and definitely like seeing the midwives and things do their jobs as well was really interesting and it's something that um, is quite unique to Southampton as well. On a final note in terms of the preclinical years um, we also have student selected modules so you take um, different modules in sort of the medical humanities whether that's um, art, theatre, um, <clears throat> music, um, learning a new language so there's lots to kind of just balance out all the science heavy stuff that you've been doing um, so far, of course. Yeah. Um, we don't move on to the research project in Clayton years. So in Southampton, another unique thing about our university is that we, in our year three, in the first semester, you do a research project. This is essentially whereby you get a chance to actually take part in some sort of research like that piece of interest. So for example, I did mine in um, looking at pain and I did mine in the primary care setting. So you can do your research in pretty much almost any field in medicine so whether it's surgery gp um anesthetics or child child health or anything like that and you do a particular project in that as well and i really enjoyed mine overall as well how about you um, yeah i definitely enjoyed mine and that's why i decided to um do 
do an intercalated degree. So as you can see, an intercalated degree is an optional year out um, where you can do an additional degree, whether it's a bachelor's or a master's. Um, I decided to do mine at a master's in medical science. And I've just finished that this year. <clears throat> um, if you're interested in research, it's a great thing to kind of add to your CV. But if you're not too sure, the great thing about doing the BMed Science Semester 1 is that it kind of gives you a bit of a taste of research and teaching opportunities. So if you decide that's something I'd like to explore a little bit more at Southampton, because it's optional, you can um, decide during the degree to do it, as opposed to some universities where you kind of have to do it. There are also um, opportunities to go to kind of go to medical conferences, network with people, and um, publication opportunities of your research as well. So there's lots of um, research experience that you can gain if you decided to come to Southampton. Um, so we move on to the clinical years now. So the um, latter half of year three, so first semester two onwards, you actually go into full time placement, um, whereby in year three is four days a week, with Friday being a teaching day. Um, we do placements in medicine, which includes stuff like card um, cardiovascular or cardiology, sorry, and respiratory um, GI. We do surgery, which covers a wide range of surgical specialties. And then we do primary care, which is essentially in the GP and community as well. Um, this is an invaluable experience because it actually gets us applying the knowledge we've been, we've been accumulating over the years, actually in a real life clinical setting. For example, in GP, when I was in GP, I actually managed to have my own patient list and actually see patients myself and then present back to my, my GP, my doctor, who was then supervising the whole thing and actually giving feedback about what we do with each patient, how we manage them going forward, which is essentially how we learn on placement throughout, really. Um, and then um, we're both going into our fourth year this September um, and so we'll be going on um, specialties so that's things like dermatology, ophthalmology, um, the kind of like niche specialties, acute care so you're sort of like emergency medicine, um, obstetrics and gynaecology, child health and psych. So the great thing about these placements is you're all over Hampshire if you decided to come to Southampton. Um, there are placements in Southampton but you can also go to Portsmouth, the Isle of Wight, Bournemouth, um, Reading, Guildford, there's we're literally all over the place, which is really nice because you get to see how different hospitals work. And then in year five, so the final year of the degree, um, you go back to the same placements that you are um, that you were on in year three, maybe a different location, but with the expectation that you are a final year student. Um, so you're more kind of like leading the conversation in terms of what you would do next if this was your patient. Whereas in year three, there was a lot more teaching. Um, then you'd also go on your elective in final year. So um, you might have heard that this way you get to go on a placement anywhere in the world um, and kind of practice medicine elsewhere. So we do it in our final year because then you've got all the skills that you need um, from your placements and all the knowledge throughout the degree. And it's also a great way to celebrate the end of med school. So when it comes to which university you should choose, this is a uh, this quite a hard question, but I think we've got to list out a few points that you should consider. It doesn't mean it's the foolproof plan, um, but consider if you want an early patient contact. Some people really enjoy being with patients, talking to them, because that's part of the reason why they're coming to medical school. Some people are coming in more for the academic side of things, so actually learn the theory first before they apply it. Think about what best suits you. Medical schools approach teaching med and medical students differently, and it's definitely worth looking into that. Education and research reputation. So if some if you're someone that really have a keen interest in research, look into what universities are quite keen into publishing um, research and actually take part in quite heavy handed research a lot and to see if it best suits you. Um, and what type of study there are. So again, we've listed the different if a system based integrated PBL. Think about all of those as well. Um, and then in terms of the facilities, so um, at Southampton, you would be based both at University Hospital Southampton, but also on Highfield campus, which is the main um, campus for all the various subjects. So it's really nice. You get to feel like a university student, go on campus, meet up with friends of other courses, but you also do get um, our own campus um, at the hospital too. And the location, so our cohort is typically around 200 students. Um, so it's a medium sized cohort, enough to meet different people, but also not enough to feel lost, which is really nice. And there's also lots to do around Hampshire, as I listed out all the different places before. So you're not always just kind of stuck in your room. Um, so this is just a quick slide about a journey from there, really. So once you finish your medical school, you then have two years of foundation training, whereby you rotate between different specialties. And then from there, you can make a decision.
position about which the city are going to stay and then trade in from then onwards? Um, I'm sorry, yeah, definitely just check out the slides to give you a brief run through of maybe future plans. Do you have any questions? Put us in the live chat.